Billy Donovan is like talking and like it's like muffled. Like I can't hear anything. I'm just like numb. Like I'm just in this like mode where I just can't feel anything. And I was like, yo, something's wrong. Mm. I was like, I think I'm about to break. Mm. And as he finished, I just felt my body start getting hot. And I'm just like, fuck, man. Like, I'm about to lose it, man. I'm like, I don't know what I'm feeling right now. I can't explain it. I don't know why I'm feeling this way. I don't know why it's all of a sudden. Why right now? Why in this locker room? Like, I just had no answers. And as we broke, I just walked out of the locker room and I walked around the corner. And I just fucking let it up, bro. I just broke down and started crying, bro. I just sat there for like 20 minutes until the game started damn near. And I have a job to do. And I remember that I had a job to do. I'm like, yo, this shit can wait. Just go, just go play your game, bro. Play, play to the best of your ability, and we can deal with this shit later. Mm. And uh, I went out there and played. I had a, I had a really good game. I played well. Uh, after the game, I came back in, and I just sat in the locker room for like two hours. After, like, I was, I was in there with the cleaning crew. I just sat there, and I was like, damn, like, I gotta slow down. That's when I decided. I was like, yo, I gotta go talk to somebody, man. I would say, don't be afraid to ask for help. There's nothing wrong with it. Like the object of what this is is to hear your thoughts through a third party. Doctor B, if you're watching this, I love you. He definitely needs to leave uh, Memphis. Memphis is, is is a nice city, but it, it's got some rough parts, got some rough patches. He's such a great, a terrific talent. He has the world at his, at his at his feet. He can be, you know, he can make so much money. He's putting himself down an alley that you don't want to go go down. Mm. And I speak from experience, and not saying I never was like job with with guns, but I got robbed twice, man. I used to wear a lot of jewelry. I used to be around trying to keep it real, be around the guys and stay around them. How many games do you think? I'm I'm starting at the minimum half the season. Wow, that that's wow. that's that's aggressive. That's it's a lot of games. You you think they'll do that a half a half a season, bro? Yeah, because it's it's you got to it's it's guns, man. It's 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 the safety um of of the players in the league. Um obviously they they're going to want to look out for his safety. You guys talk about Memphis. There's some there's some cities where you feel like you need to be protected, right? When y'all say leave, I say no because you're just dealing with the 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 surface level shit. Like sometimes you got to get to the root of it. You got to get deeper. So, oh, Jaw unfollows his childhood friend. Well, like y'all was just good a week ago. Like why you unfollow him now? What should happen is both of us sit down as childhood friends and be like, "Yo, let's be better." Let's hold each other accountable. Yeah. But because I'm in the league and the league coming down on me, I'm going to go say, oh, I'm not going to be friends with him no more. No, that's corny to me. Leaving Memphis would be corny because, you know, Memphis ain't the problem. It's you. Only Dame can change Dame's trajectory. He kind of teeters the line, right? Mm -hmm. In one conversation, you'll hear him say, we have all the pieces that we need in Portland. We have a great group of young guys. If we can't get it done here in Portland, then, you know, I don't know what the future holds. And then you'll hear him say things like, yo, well, Miami, New York, Boston, wherever he said, Brooklyn. And it's like, okay, but which one is it, Dame? But I'm with Ash. It's the same old thing, different day. I think he's flirting with the idea, but I'm not sure it'll really land. I mean, when I look at the teams that they talked about, the Heat don't need Dame. And the Celtics could potentially use a guard, but I don't think that he's going to feel as needed as he wants to feel. The Knicks certainly don't need him. Brunson's been doing what he needs to do. To me, Dame's a lover boy, which I think is why he taps into that loyalty so much. I think he really is a lover boy, and I think he likes feeling needed. And in those other places, I don't think he's as needed as he is yeah. in Portland. You ever see that meme of the guy where he's walking with his girl and he turns around and he's like, but he doesn't he doesn't let go of his girl's hand. That's Dame. Dame. He's holding hands with Portland, but hey, he's listen. also he got a he's got a wandering eye to see what else is out there. But he he's Ashley, not making no jump. With all that being said, Ashley, I'm gonna say this. Walking in slippery places, you eventually fall. Dame Lillard, because of you? everything you just said, mm -hmm. right? He's moving on. Do whatever you gotta do. I'm gonna play you the best I can defensively, and uh, you're gonna score your an MVP, but you're going to do some work, too. You're going to have to battle me on the offensive and defensive mm -hmm. rebounds, and you're going to have to run, and you're going to deal with, me, deal with me hitting you every play. That's how I've lived my entire career, which is why I'm a three-time leading rebounder. Like, Dude. you're going you're gonna to have to fight me. Like <laughs> you Give yourself some credit. You're four-time NBA. My probably four, four times. Four times. I'm, hey, I'm, 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 I'm actually – Shout out to Corey. Yeah. <laughs> four times. I, I, left one, I left one out. Oh, yeah, I, I love that, Corey. Yeah. 2016 <laughs> and then for three years straight, 2018, 19, and 20. I am the, the best ever. I'm wow. trying to tell you. Historically. Do you feel respected in the NBA? I don't do it for the respect. I do because I love the game and mm. I do it. I don't do it for, for validation. 
And I think that's where guys are failing at right now. I do it because I love it and I truly love the art of rebounding because no one takes that art seriously, which is why I say probably that I'm the best ever because I've done my homework, I've done my work, I've done everything statistically. And I think statistically, if you look at it, I think percentage-wise, I am number one historically. <laughs> I, I just wanted to say this, man. I think all the fellas need to make sure that they understand how much power there is in having a strong woman. Mm -hmm. We talk about mental health all the time. We right. talk about breaks all the time. I am a human being. I need someone who I could depend on the same way Liv said. Mm -hmm. So having not necessarily a weak woman, I just think that you need someone in this day and age that is strong enough to stand on their own and strong enough to also help you stand up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's powerful. No, that's, 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 that's dope. That's well, you know real. what? You should be friends with Zion. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh <man. laughs> he need a friend right now. Actually, you are unhinged. I'm just, just saying. I'm just saying. I didn't. I'm not. I'm Ashley just saying. Hold on. Ashley, walk, have a conversation. Ashley, free. walk us through it. Walk, walk us through. I just heard like little uh, sound bites. Like, uh, like what's the what's the situation? I don't know all the details. I don't oh, want to know all the details. Oh, I know them. <laughs> Go ahead, Liv, because I don't know. I just know Zion's having a baby, and there's a lot of people upset about it. Like, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. So apparently, he was messing around with a with a porn star. Which okay, do your thing, like yeah. whatever. Do your thing. Their own. But then he comes out and he has a gender reveal, right? Yeah. So yeah. he has a gender normal. reveal for everything's his, normal so far. His partner, mm -hmm. and and then the here comes here comes the woman he was mess, messing with in the adult in the adult movie um, <laughs> industry adult <actress>. lifestyle. <laughs> And she huh. comes out with a tweet that says, I let you, so I don't even like, it's like so <laughs> crude. She said, I let you spit in my mouth. Oh, you Lord. did this to me last week. You did this to me like last week. And now this, now this woman's, Freak you got a gender on. reveal going. Like <laughs> she went into detail about their intimacy, their freaky wow. intimacy mm -hmm. after the baby gender reveal dropped because then she realized, oh, like she said, you were supposed to move me to um, New Orleans. Like, how is that going to work? You having us both in the same city? Like, she just went. She did not. They were going to be sister wives. That's how it was going to work. Oh yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. They're going to be she what? Crazy. Sister wives. But she included sister the wives. detail of like the spit thing, and people were like, "Oh, he's Whoa. a freak." Whoa! All right, Zion. Like, yeah, right. He's a freak. Can y'all imagine? Can y'all imagine though? Like, if no. <laughs> no we can't. No. I'm just saying. Like, no think imagine. about this. All the shit that we have in a closet, right? Like, just think about it. You know what I mean? If that stuff got out publicly, bro, there'd be some crazy, yeah, some right crazy now, Zion, stories out there. When you know, Zion's when you know, Zion got a walking like crazy closet. Crazy Brandon. <laughs> Say that again, like, Liv. crazy to me. Like, I move a very specific way, and I'm not even relevant enough for people to be wanting to know my business. When you are relevant enough for your business to be wanted to hear, like, I mean, like you be you get you an NDA. Right, you would be right. surprised, like about thinking you're not relevant enough. I have full blown Reddit threads <laughs> analyzing my Instagram followers, who's liking my photos, That's and so somehow actually you're six all tiers together. above me. <laughs> yeah. Girl, I am not. Listen, you are. about there. There have there been yet. people. There have been people who like my photos and all of a sudden we're dating. Like right. there's re there's full blown Reddit threads. Who are they saying it. you're like, dating I've, now, I've Ashley? Who, what's what's the story now? Brandon, if I collected every guy that they <laughs> say that I'm dating, I would have multiple NBA championships. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hall of Famers, <laughs> oh, <laughs> potential man. Hall of Famers. Potent there's potential Hall of Famers. I would be I would have three peated by now. Like that's how <laughs> solid that roster allegedly is. Like it's it's. It's very impressive, wow. honestly. If it were true, like Kendall Jenner, who she wishes she were me. If it yo, were true, yo, like, at number one, Patrick Mahomes. He's he's number one for me as well. So I'm not going to push back on that one at all. Okay, please. How can we really debate Aaron Rodgers at number two? He still can play at a high level. What I saw from Aaron Rodgers last season, I was very unimpressed by. My number two spot right now. I'd push Joe Burrow into that number two spot just below Patrick Mahomes over wow. Aaron Rodgers. Um, Russell Wilson, three, the most winningest quarterback through 10 years. I know he's going to bring it up. It's Ooh. Russell Wilson. I know he's going to bring it up. <laughs> One year is not going to change how I feel about the most winningest quarterback in the NFL. So, Liv, that's why he's at three. Any pushback there? Yeah, because as a Broncos fan, we emptied the bank on this man. So my expectation was very high. 
How do you go that low from where the standard has been for you for so many years? He definitely didn't play like the winningest quarterback. Let me mm -hmm. put it that way. All right, so number four, Joe Burrow. He can easily be the guy in the NFL, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe this is, you know, Patrick Mahomes and Joe Burrow is the old school Tom Brady, uh, uh, Peyton Manning type thing. And the last one I have is Lamar Jackson. He saves John Harbaugh's uh, job. He Joe Flacco goes down. He goes and wins six games in a row. He gets them in the playoffs. He wins MVP. Again, if we're talking right now, from what I saw at the tail end, of his season last year i really really like trevor lawrence right now so i'm gonna go mm. he's he's five right now for me is it about money or is it about attention because mm -hmm. what the strip club you know <laughs> i mean i just think that i just think that we, we we've been here before we've heard this before we you know i i just feel like we've got a bit of a drama queen on our hands sometimes with james harden and i love the way he plays um is it really about money or does he just want to go somewhere where he's you know he's number one right i don't know i feel like he obviously he he had a pretty a pretty good postseason run here with the 76ers but it wasn't about him mm. it was about the mvp it was about joel and b and i just feel like we we've been through this before with james harden where um he's very easily unsatisfied it feels mm. very hard to satisfy this man because he is quick to play hopscotch with teams around the league. So I don't know. I, I think it's more about attention yeah. than money, honestly. James Harden doesn't want to win for, for real. He wants to win via convenience. And what I mean by Ooh. that is he doesn't really want to put the work in that re requ mm. at this stage in his career, at least that's how it comes across required to win. He wants to do it by the most convenient, um, you know, road less road most traveled means necessary because mm -hmm. if he really wanted to win for real, why are you leaving Philly? Mm -hmm. Why are you running from a team that is a lot more prone to win than Houston is? Mm -hmm. Like for me, it means that you are prioritizing money, which you have plenty of. Right. You are prioritizing lifestyle. You are prioritizing, you know, what Liv said, kind of being the center of attention before actually winning. Because if you actually wanted to win, your situation right now is conducive for that. Mm -hmm. So I wish that, and it's unfortunate because you see glimpses of James Harden and you're, you're reminded of who he can be, <laughs> but then that's not who he is consistently. Mm -hmm. And he's not that consistently because it's not that important to him. And yeah. I feel like we have to have that conversation. I feel like it's about time that, that we have this conversation about James Harden and realize for him, there's a lot of other things within the world of basketball that come before actually doing the work and actually grinding and actually winning mm. a chip. He, at a lot of times, comes across lazy, unmotivated, uninterested. It's just not a player who gives you the maximum effort that you know he can give you because the skill set is still there. It's right. not like this is a player whose skill set is gone. Mm -hmm. This is a player who just for some reason prioritizes a lot of other things Yo. above winning. But if he can win, he wants to do it in the most comfortable, convenient for right. him environment. And that's just not the case. He doesn't want the smoke. He doesn't want the grind. Mm -hmm. He mm. just wants to go someplace and have a championship handed to him. And James, look like you're 30 something years old. That's not going to happen, big boy. So mm. you got to figure out what you want to do, like mm. which direction you're going in. Well, and if it's to go to Houston and kick your feet up and be the uh, king of the H town again and live that life. Cool. Ashley, but if you're trying to win, I don't see how you go to Houston for that. <laughs>